Kiora and welcome. Kotera tu tenera. Today is Tuesday, which means it's time for my Tuesday prose reading. Today I'm going to read from New Zealand Inheritance by Essie Summers. Essie Summers was born in 1912 in Christchurch and she died in Terradale in 1998. As well as being a novelist, Essie Summers was at one time a draper's assistant and a journalist. She wrote 56 novels which were translated into 25 languages and sold 19 million copies worldwide. New Zealand Inheritance is a Mills and Boons classic which was published in 1957. Roberta had thought it a pity when she had to leave the car in Oamaru for repairs, but now she was glad to be approaching the ancestral home on foot. If she had driven, she might have missed the full beauty of the lane. It was tree-lined and dappled with shadow, sweet with birdsong and the haunt of bees. The scent of wild violets rose from under the silver birches, and at the end of the lane a ribbon of daffodils ran by the side of the path and disappeared under the leafy hedge to spread unconfined throughout the field beyond. A little bit of England here in New Zealand. It had been autumn when Roberta had last seen Heatherly, an autumn thirteen years before, when she had been a child of twelve. These green hedges had been rose red with hawthorn berries. The red oaks and sycamores had stood out against the sombre pines like torches lit for burning. And the orchard over to the west, that was now a fairyland of blossom, had been a tempting place where green gauges and peaches and apples had hung nectar sweet on laden boughs. The month that Roberta had spent here then had been a memorable one sandwiched in between a trip to Sydney and one to India, an oasis of deep-rooted and stable things, and a world that even to a twelve-year-old had seemed a succession of kaleidoscopic changes. It had been a colourful world, interesting and vivid, but one tired even of change. Yet Mother had loved it, Mother, who till she married an artist with restless feet, had known nothing but the comfort and solidity of Heatherly. Roberta paused for a moment at the great drive entrance that swept in over wide cattle stops and drew a deep breath. Then she picked up her small case again and trudged over the rails. A bend in the drive brought her in full view of the house. So often, in strange corners of the earth, she had tried to conjure up for herself a picture of it all, and had failed. Yet now she found herself thinking, of course. It stood against a background of smooth green hills and dark pines, a widespread, gracious house with tall chimney stacks and gabled roofs. Built of white Wamaru stone, weathered by years of sun and wind and rain, into a harmonious grey, it faced the sunny New Zealand north. Creepers clung lovingly about it and rioted where they would. Virginia creeper, clematis, morning glory, wisteria, and beside a window a great espaliered apricot tree spread its bloomy branches. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. Matewa, see you next time.